Greetings, beautiful people. I think you're going to love this good stew. I have actually never shared a good stew recipe on this channel, but here we go today. I think you're going to love the beautiful twists. So keep on watching. Here I have my goat meat with the skin on and it's been washed thoroughly and we're going to pressure cook it. Yes, because who has time? With the following ingredients. First, we have some fennel seeds, followed by anise seeds. We add a little bit of salt to it to create that abrasive surface, make grinding more efficient and easy. Then we also introduce one scotch bonnet chili. Make sure to not skip the combination of anise seeds and fennel seeds. Because they have licorice flavor, they really help to tame the game in the goat meat. We all know that goat meat is very gamey. In a stew, you want to kind of tone it down a bit. Now I've added some ginger paste and some garlic paste, as well as some onions, and I'm gonna keep grinding. So what we're doing here is building flavor for our marinade. I'm also throwing in some flat leaf parsley. Yes, indeed, this is gonna be so fragrant. And mind you, all the salt we're needing to season our goat meat is going into the grinder. So it's okay to keep adding them in bits to make grinding easy. Some meat seasoning has gone in, followed by some curry powder. We're also going to add some crushed black pepper. Everything is now ground into a paste. And just like so, our marinade is ready. And yes, this is not diluted with anything right yes it's pretty potent so pour all of it onto the goat meat rinse your grind out with just a little bit of water and throw it on there because when you're pressure cooking you need moisture and now rub it in and we're going to pressure cook for 30 minutes now if you're wondering if you can use a blender to grind your ingredients absolutely just a little bit of water to move those blades and you're in business. It is perfectly pressure cooked. And look at all that broth. It's gonna bring our stew so much more flavor. Now we're going to fry the goat meat. So a little bit of avocado oil goes into the pan. We've separated the meat pieces from the broth. So we'll typically deep fry the meat pieces. However, we are taking the shallow frying method today uh, because really all we want is to continue to build flavor and frying your meat pieces after fr pressure cooking them is another way of building flavor. We want a golden brown color. We do not want them dehydrated. We want them to stay juicy, but we just really want that golden brown color because again, that's more flavor. So you would go in and stir. You want every side of the meat piece to be golden brown. Now remove them from the oil and set aside. Continue this process until all of your meat pieces are golden brown. Very nicely done. Now we will remove all of our meat pieces and set aside. Next step is the stew. So. For that, you're going to need some chopped onions, a lot of chopped onions. We're going to caramelize this with some curry powder. Now, I've turned my heat down to medium low. My heat level goes all the way up to 10, and it's now on three. So we'll stir everything in, and because we have this much onion in the pot, we're going to throw the lid on, come back and stir occasionally so that they're evenly caramelized. That's what we're going for. Now, a stew like this requires a lot of onions because one, it's a good way of building flavor in a stew like this, you get that sweetness from the caramelization. Not only that, complements the other ingredients and also gives you volume. So why would you say no to that, right? If you don't like onions, don't worry. You won't even know there are onions in there because of the next step. So keep on watching. I did throw some habanero chilies in there after the onions were about 90% caramelized. And now I have combined some flat leaf parsley, some tomatoes, and dawa dawa. That is our next 
twist. Now I'm also combining my anise seeds and my fennel seeds all into the blender. This is a step I'm asking you to pay attention to. We're going to remove all the onions and the habanero chilies and blend them with the rest of the ingredients in the blender into a very smooth puree. If you have a profound appreciation for umami, then dawa dawa is your best friend. Dawa dawa is also called locust bean. And it is available on amazon.com if you're in the diaspora. Yes, it is. Now we're also now going to cook our tomato paste in the same oil. So you're going to cook that for about five minutes, stirring periodically. What you want is them, the tomato paste to change color slightly. Then you're gonna go in with baking soda. Yes, please do not let that throw you off. This stew requires a lot of tomatoes and it can be overwhelming. Tomatoes have sweetness, but they also have a lot of tanginess, sourness. We want to eliminate that in this stew, all right? Because in the end, we're going to arrive at a Zongo flavor. Zongo flavor is authentic to Ghanaian cuisine, specifically the Northern cuisine, the Northern part of Ghana. And what that is, is a dense, authentic, savory flavor. We live for it in Ghana. Yes, we do. To the tomato paste, I did add some uh, garlic and ginger paste, continue to cook that. And now I am adding my tomato base to see what I mean by tomato -y? Yes. So we're continuing to build flavor. Now the baking soda was added to simply eliminate or neutralize the acidity in the tomatoes because we all know tomatoes are very acidic in taste. All right, now we have also added our blended ingredients, all of those caramelized onions, the habanero, and the other aromatics have now been added. See how smooth that was? So yes, we have added it and we're gonna stir it in until well combined. And then we're also going in now with our broth from the goat meat. So see, all the layers of flavor. Mmm, mmm. This is gonna be good. Mm -hmm. So stir all of that in now. The heat has been turned down now to low. So we have it on two, two out of 10. We're going to throw the lid on, vent it slightly so it can fry. Now you're going to cook this low and slow. You want to be very patient with this process. All right, cooking time takes close to two hours, which believe it or not, is only a fraction of the time it typically takes to cook a stew like this in Ghana. Now we cut the cooking time down significantly. The first thing we did to do that was the pressure cooking of the meat. Two, caramelizing the onions. Three, using the baking soda addition really helps to cut the time down. I've gone in and tasted and I realized I need some more seasoning and some spices to perfume the stew before it's done completely cooking. So I added some crushed black pepper to it because you are in a novice kitchen. I love that spice. And then we also added some crushed white pepper. Just love that flavor in here. Get creative with it. Taste as you go and you will know what to use. Yeah, follow the rest of the process, but get creative with your little additions here and there. All right, now our stew is almost completely done cooking. And as our Gen Z population will say, the flavors are popping. Yes, the flavors are flavoring. <laughs> yes, indeed. You should be very happy with the taste at this stage. We are nearing the two hour mark. I love the color that our stew has attained right now. The oil also has resurfaced. We have been cooking on low heat for a while now. I went in with some pressure cooked cow hide because I love the fact that it can bring more flavor, texture, and also it's going to make the stew a collagen rich one. I love cow hide. Most people who know me know that about me. So my willy and my pomo, I don't play with that. Yes, so that has gone in. 
all right? And I pressure cooked it with the same marinade I used to cook, pressure cook the goat meat. And with that, we don't have to fry it. It goes in and now you cook for about five more minutes and go in with your goat pieces, your goat meat, and submerge them. Let them cook another 10 to 15 minutes or so and your stew is ready. This is great served with wache or rice. So yeah, there you have it. Before we serve, we always go in with some whole habanero chilies. It serves as a garnish. It's a Ghanaian thing. All right. If you know, you know. <laughs> and it also can be used to spice up your serving. So if you want more kick in terms of heat from a chili, burst one into your serving of whatever. And there you have it. We're serving it on Wache today. And I love to place my Wache on the Wache leaves because they have this grassy, meaty, almost smoky flavor. And when your food is hot and you serve it on the wache leaves and then wrap it in it for maybe a couple of minutes or so, you come back and huh, what it does, like, if you know, you know, mm -hmm. if you know, you know, if you have access to these leaves, treat yourself. I, I, I feel it's a treat. That's how I, I, I see it. Yeah. So about five minutes, I come back. And this wache is ready to be devoured. Mm -hmm. So unwrap and dig in. Woo. Now, before you do that, if you love avocado, this is the best time to add it. And if you're thinking of a chill drink to go with this, then girl, oh man, or chale, you get it. Some Sprites, Coke, Fanta, Muscatella, my favorites. Or some sobolo. Hey, yes. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're inspired to try the recipe. Make it a great day, friends and family. And as always, have fun, especially in that kitchen.